third time and uh, I think I was having some audio issues and hopefully that's fixed. I don't know why um, the volume dropped on the audio, but I think it should be fine at this time around. Okay, and I'll see if I can get the other ones deleted so we're not confused about it. Okay, so um, basically this is a power tip. This is just going to be a very short stream and the whole point of this is that I kind of built up my last stream to this point where I was going to show you how you guys can close off uh, a, a retopology session uh, because at the end it kind of gets complicated to figure out how to connect certain things and if there are areas that you don't really care about like the ones I have here then you can easily um, easily remedy the situation by um, using Ziri Mesher, and that's the power tip. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to do is I think there's something strange going on here uh, with these polygons, and uh, so what I'm going to do here is figure out what that issue is and then solve it. So it looks to me like maybe one of these are flipped or something like that, so I'm just going to delete some polygons here and just create another uh, area for me that needs to be filled, which is fine. It's going to use the exact same method. Okay, so now I basically have these areas that are holes, but I definitely want to make sure that I fill them, okay? So the first thing I do is uh, make sure that this whole thing is one polygroup, which it is. And then the next thing you do is you go to the Zmodeler tool, uh, or brush, sorry, and then you uh, make sure that uh, your edge action is set to close and concave hole. Right, and one other thing I want to do here is just say do nothing for polygons so I don't accidentally delete any polygons. So when you click on one of these edges, it just fills it in with this kind of triangle soup over here, which is fine for now. And then I'm going to do the same here. And notice that these are all different polygroups, which is what I do want. And then lastly but not least, the, the one below. Okay, so now that I've done this, then the next thing I do is I just usually, if it's a symmetrical piece, I mirror and weld it just so it's easier for ZBrush to do the same thing on both sides. So there's that. And sometimes if one side looks, side looks better than the other, you mirror and mirror and weld. So now I've got this. And um, after I do this uh, process, I always want to check and make sure that there are no problems with the mesh. So I'll go under geometry and go to uh, mesh integrity, which is the lowest one here and do a check mesh and right enough there's an issue and I'll just do fix mesh and that will fix the issue that was there so I'm good to go now. Now in my stream I made a mistake and I thought what you did is you masked this piece and then you did zero mesher but that doesn't work so that was wrong uh, my assumption there was wrong but the way to do it is you make sure that um, you select this and invert the selection so everything that's going to be uh, remeshed is visible now Okay, there they are. And uh, then what you want to do is use zero mesher. So that's under geometry again here, under zero mesher. And what you want to do first things first is you can choose adaptive or not. You can choose half or same, doesn't really matter. Uh, but what you want to do is you want to make sure freeze border is on. Keep groups is on because you want to keep these polygroups. And then also make sure that your smooth groups is all the way down to zero, okay? Uh, you might want to, you can bump this up to very little value, but I usually just leave it at zero. And then once I do the zero mesher, what that will do is it will zero mesh those uh, parts here and close it up for me. So notice here that it closed up this part over here and it closed up the bottom, which I don't really care about that much. And it closed up the top area here uh, for me as well. Okay. So now I basically have a completely uh, quadded uh, model. Uh, I usually do a mesh integrity check after this as well. Well, and now again, it also has some issues and fix mesh fixes it for me. So now I'm good. I've got a, a good quadded solid mesh. Control W makes this uh, the same polygroup and you can't really tell here that I used a zero mesher to fill this area or this area. So we are good to go. And uh, yeah, and that's how you do it. One last thing that I usually end up doing just to make sure that these are all uh, on the surface of the um, of the previous uh, subtool that I had, the DynaMesh one. I just uh, have a area of time where I basically have only these two visible. So I've got uh, the uh, DynaMesh one visible, and then this is the one we retopologized. And then I just do a project here under uh, project all uh, or project and project all and uh, just project it just to make sure that all the um, vertices are 
on the uh, are touching the Dynamesh model. Right again, the bottom part I don't really care about, so I don't really care that there's like some weird uh, polygrouping uh, or um, uh, kind of uh, pulls over here or anything like that because that's just going to be in the bottom. Nobody's going to see it. I can even actually not even have that part. Uh, but yeah, so here we go. Fully retopologize. If I press D here, dynamic subdiv, you'll see that it's all good to go. Uh, it looks like I have a little uh, area here that is not um, connected. And for something like that, I usually the first thing I usually do is just go to geometry under modify topology. Where are you? Am I in geometry? I'm not even right. Let me see here. Okay, geometry, yes, and modify topology and weld points. Okay, and then let's see if that did it. Yep, so I don't have that um, hole that I had over here that fixed it. So it was just two points were next to each other, but not welded. Okay, so there it is. Uh, I've got my piece now and I can subdivide it. I can um, model it further or do whatever I need to it. But basically this is how I retopologized uh, this, um, you know, this Dynamesh piece that I had, but I have my lines going on the edges where I want them to be, uh, as opposed to if Dynamesh did it or Zmesh did it, it might uh, have the flow be different than what it is here. So that's the power tip. Hopefully this helps you. And uh, yeah, um, thanks for watching and uh, happy ZBrushing.